hundred years ago today, this little spigot was turned on and in the San Fernando Valley, William Mulholland and the then mayor of Los Angeles, Fred Eaton, brought water through the Los Angeles Aqueduct. Water that literally was the foundation for the growth, not just of the San Fernando Valley, but the annexation of many cities, the growth of this entity that we're in today, this marvelous metropolis called Los Angeles. And when you think back at that time, what sustainability was, was about getting as many resources as you could to make sure that the city could grow. There was not much consideration given to the environment. There was not much focus on what happened when those resources would be depleted long term because they were plentiful. Land was there. There was a, a spirit that John F. Kennedy once described when he actually accepted the um, nomination to be the Democratic nominee in 1960 here in the Coliseum and gave his great New Frontier speech. He described this place as the last frontier. And indeed it was for decade after decade after decade, a place where we weren't defined by where we came from or what we had done, but where we were going and what we wanted to do. And I still think that even though the decades have changed the perspectives, and today we reflect on 100 years of that phenomenal growth here in Los Angeles, that pioneering spirit has not left us. It inhabits who we are. That ability to say, not just this is the way the world is, but the way the world might be, is the reason that I know each and every one of you are here today. I want to thank Fred and his incredible staff at Clean Tech LA. They get it. Kind of you to say that I get it, but you get it. Um, and you have, together with a great partnership, built up something that shows how LA can be at the cutting edge of a new economy, which as mayor is my number one goal. How Los Angeles can be a shining example of a city doing the right things, what we know we need to do and those things that we need to stop doing. How to get out of the way and how to give a little assistance. Right now we do both the wrong way. We get in the way when we shouldn't and we never give assistance when we should. And if we can invert that and find those industries that are going to be key to job growth, to capital formation, to a prosperous city, then everything else that I want to do to have beautifully paved streets and a, a subway that gets all us around town, and, uh, a city that at the end of the day provides opportunity through its schools, that is possible when we have the resources and the economic base to do so. When we have a chance to get all these movers and shakers and innovators, in one place, it's very exciting for me, and I wanted to thank the keynote speakers for lending us their brilliance. My friend Michael Picker, uh, Mary Nichols, who's uh, led the way for so long, David Arian, and the uh, LA, uh, CI, CLA board members in attendance, Michael Swords, David Gattello, who did great work for us at the CRA, back when there was a CRA. And of course, I really co-present this today with um, my dear friend and, and Deputy Mayor Kelly Bernard, who's wearing two hats today. Why don't you stand up for a second, Kelly? Because you're going to need to know her if you don't She's been so essential in leading this effort, both uh, here in the Mayor's office, but also at the Department of Water and Power, which provided much of the seed capital as well uh, for getting things going. And lastly, I want to thank all of you for taking the time to gather at a critical moment for our clean tech industry. You know, I remember a couple of close friends who started one of the first uh, clean tech uh, venture capital funds, private equity funds, excuse me. And at a time before everybody else was doing that, it seemed to be a very fringy kind of thing to do 10 years ago. Oh, you're just doing this because you're environmentalists or because capital's lined up in all these other tech industries and you needed a new place to go. In the coming two or three years, this LA-based firm had the highest returns of any uh, venture fund in the country. And it showed that there was a hunger to invest and a hunger to see the economy transform itself, to address social problems that we face and challenges as well as economic ones together. And for this moment in history, the question won't be whether or not we change the way we do business, because we all will. The question is who will lead the way. The very core of our economy is about to change, and now is the time to determine whether we are at the forefront or we will follow. And as your mayor, I certainly will answer that question very simply, we will lead. The inevitability of this change is undeniable. Fossil fuels are depleting, volatile global markets are, for energy and goods are causing us to look domestically, to provide for our needs, and outside factors are forcing our businesses, our governments, our consumers to rethink how we live, how we buy, how we sell, how we work. And there are three other very important imperatives that are driving us towards, pro driving us towards progress. They're economic, regulatory, and environmental. 
From an economic perspective, we simply cannot afford to keep doing business as usual with the rising cost of coal, the cost of importing power and water from outside sources. The sheer cost of doing business the same way is unacceptable. It has come to bear what I've said for over a decade, the long-term costs of living cheap in the short term are too great to bear. I remember as a young council member, when the Department of Water and Power was about to renew its stake in a coal plant in another state, and our then uh, chief legislative analyst, my dear friend Ron Deaton, knew he had all the votes. He was referred to as the 16th council member. We were going to renew that. But I turned to another young council member at the time, Alex Padilla, and I said, I don't feel very good about locking us in for decades more with a dirty coal producing plant now that climate change we've seen, it's been documented. And, you know, we were laughed at. Mr. Eaton kind of, uh, Deaton, excuse me, said, uh, well, don't worry, you guys vote the way you're going to go. And we talked to a few more council members, and then suddenly we had 10 votes, and for the first time in LA city history, we voted to divest from a coal plant. And we were able to put that money and reshift it and reframe it into renewable energy long before we had a campaign to go beyond the coal, long before people were talking about that. We showed that a new way of thinking could drive us again to be at the forefront. But it's not just the economic needs, it's the regulatory needs. Whether or not we wanted to do this, we have to do this. To cut our use of coal in half by 2016, AB 32, are also, also our local mandates require those moves forward. But last and not least, of course, is the environmental imperative that we all feel. We simply cannot continue to pollute our air, our water, and our land without dire consequences. As the mayor of one of the nation's largest cities, as an active member in C40, as somebody who was just appointed uh, this uh, yesterday, I believe, by the president to a, a task force on climate change, I take this very personally, but most importantly in my role as a father of an almost two-year-old girl. I know what it was like to grow up in San Fernando Valley, a couple blocks away from two freeways, what the incidence of cancer was in those homes during the days of leaded fuel. It hit both of my parents. I know that my lungs growing up in, the San, in, in a Los Angeles full of smog in the 70s is estimated to be only 85% of what it should be. So with all the forces that are shepherding us into a new era of sustainable living and working, it's now time for us to decide whether our, what our future will be. Is LA going to be a passive consumer of innovations of others, enriching others, or are we going to lead the way, becoming healthier and richer as we do it? Well, Los Angeles is already off to a great start thanks to you in no part. We're the second largest green economy in the United States, home to more green jobs than any other U.S. region, employing 4.5% of private sector employment through green jobs. We are the fastest growing market in the key sectors of electric vehicles, hybrid vehicles, solar and recycling. We're home to the first major utility to get to 20% renewable portfolio standard. And we're on our way to meeting a zero waste goal, or as close as we can to get there. We're already at 76% of the waste that we generate in our households are either mulched or recycled. And we're already leading the way in solar development. So I have no doubt in our ability to lead the path forward. You know, I always talk about the statistic in water that we consume the same amount of water today that we did 30 years ago with a million more people simply because we shifted things like our plumbing codes, um, our requirements for low flow toilets and other things. We know how to do this here. But as a city, we have all the raw ingredients for success, whether that's technical, regulatory, whether it's the weather, or most importantly, you, the human capital that are here. And this, the green economy plays to our strengths, a port, an airport, these things that are important for us to become a hub of international global markets. And our creative class is world famous, not only with Hollywood and our entertainment industry exporting goods and ideas, but rising industries like video game, gaming, like Riot Games, a company that didn't exist a few years ago now, employing more than 1,200 people here they're rumored to be responsible for 2% of all the time people spend on the internet. So if global productivity goes down, we're doing it. <laughs> but think about the other creative industries we have, apparel. Um, and I think about creative industries, including science research and biotech, the way that Cedar sinai is helping cure heart disease and UCLA AIDS. USC has literally found a cure to a, a sort of adult onset blindness that had never had a cure before. So this incredibly diverse economy, an $861 billion economy, and an even more diverse population with over 200 languages spoken here, our colleges and our universities, three of the top 25 in this city that doesn't exist anywhere else, graduating more engineers regionally than Berkeley and Stanford combined. Mix that with over 300 days of sunshine, our incredible natural surroundings, and the can-do natural, sorry, the can-do Angelino spirit, 
we have the recipe for success. So that's why I'm so proud of the work that this organization is doing in fostering local ideas and talent, business. It shows that, research sorry, shows that 87% of startups are still in business three years later from this incubator. It's a remarkable statistic compared to only half of startups that did not have an incubator. And 86, sorry, 65% of incubator-assisted startups received crucial third-party funding compared to 10% of companies that were not assisted by incubators. We're figuring something out here, and it's working. When I took office in July, I did so with a mandate from the people of Los Angeles to get back to the basics and to put the recession in the rearview mirror. And making an investment in clean tech is just plain good common sense projected to be the fastest growing sector for the next 15 years. And clean tech brings manufacturing and better than li living wage jobs back to LA. One out of four jobs in clean tech are manufacturing jobs versus less than one out of 10 for all other sectors combined. With USC, we're applying for the president's new manufacturing initiative. And this was very important. We were the manufacturing capital of the country before we got into office. This wasn't happening. We got together with USC and we're applying just as Ohio has done to look at new three-dimensional uh, manufacturing, to look at new high-tech uh, techniques that we can use to make sure that we have that here. I am committed as mayor to ensure that this remains a manufacturing center. I've also hired the city's first chief sustainability officer, Matt Peterson, who you'll hear from later today, to help me make LA a cleaner, greener, and more sustainable city with an eye to creating good-paying, green-collar jobs for Angelinos. And Matt brings considerable experience to City Hall from his work at Global Green, which he headed up for many years where he worked on global climate changes, uh, global so climate change issues that impact our nation and abroad. And let me just say one thing, that I've inserted sustainability not as a peripheral policy area or one of many equals. It is a value in the prism that I used to refract everything at City Hall. When I had our general managers for the first time reapply for their jobs, one of the four values, the others being technology, customer service, and economic growth, was sustainability. So if you look at those last two, that means every general manager has to think through the environment, and every general manager needs to think through the economy. What does a fire chief have to do with that? Well, a fire chief has a fleet of vehicles. What sort of fuels are we using? He uses chemicals to put out fires. What does a librarian have to do with the economy? Well, that's a place where people come to look for job skills, or to enroll for, health, for healthcare, to become citizens. We have to use those tools that we have in the city to make sure that those core values essentially deperipheralize something that for a long time has just been an issue area into a core value of the city. Matt will also bring together with his team creating LA's first ever citywide sustainability plan, which we hope will not only drive health, but it will also drive economic health in our city as well. Not just for the next four years, but for the next 10 or 20 years. And the sustainability team is also focused on achieving short-term goals versus the CSO Sustainability Innovations Lab including things like incubating projects, policies, and innovative financing strategies. So if you have your ideas, bring them to Kelly and bring them to Matt. I'm also committed to leveraging our city's formidable education community to enhance our knowledge and provide you with a trained workforce ready for employment. Whether it's cutting edge research that we need to take from the classroom to the boardroom, whether it's those engineers that we need to keep here, or whether it's the first ever convening that I did of all of our chancellors and presidents. Never before had we had at City Hall the head of UCLA and USC and Loyola and, and Caltech and Occidental and the community college system and CSU LA and Northridge and Dominguez Hills. All of these folks talking about how they can together start to do a regional partnership that will position us all for prosperity as well. I'm also focused to help cut red tape at City Hall. To make sure your city government is a partner in what you need to get done. So when you have an idea, we don't stand in the way. With a three, few clicks, we can get all the permits that you need in one place. So you can build out your spaces uh, electronically and submit those plans without having to print out $50,000 worth of blueprints over and over. To cut the city's business tax and eliminate it so that we aren't uncompetitive uh, in our county. And I'm also focused on direct assistance to your industry through clean through the Clean Tech Corridor. Which, is, which I know is very near and dear to your hearts. It is now a four-mile strip that is located in the heart of LA's industrial core, just to the east of us, designed to become the physical hub of innovation in Los Angeles. I remember when it was shaky, and people weren't sure where we could be and whether it would get on its feet. Now I have so many people visiting me saying, can we get in there? And the only struggle is where do we find even more land? 
The Clean Tech Corridor is home to the Los Angeles Clean Tech Incubator, the Clean Tech Manufacturing Center, and your very own Lucretz Innovation Campus. And we're also doing some similar work with our partners at Port Tech LA, a maritime technology incubator charged with developing the technologies to green the port, building on the already phenomenal success we've had with programs like our Clean Trucks Initiative, where we cut our truck emissions by 80%. I was in Washington last week. I met with the president in the Oval Office on Monday and discussed with him specifically our port. And when I told him the statistics that maybe you do or do not know, that I think 190 of the biggest ships in the world uh, emit the same amount of pollutants of the entire fleet of cars in the world, think of what we can do by just taking a few American ports and figuring out a way to continue the momentum that we've made in reducing those pollutants in our air. I'm here today to make sure that you know that I'm here to be your partner. I look forward to working together. I look forward to greeting our city. And the words of my predecessor, Fred Eaton, well, it's not his words, actually. It's William Mulholland's words. The moment they turned on the water, he said, there it is, take it. Well, maybe today we don't just take it. We use and reuse it. We figure out a way to conserve it. We figure out a way to sustain it. But there it is. It is yours. Let's make it work. Thank you so much.